Hello everyone, welcome to my messy studio. My name is Mark, and I'm an artist and an art professor who loves using fountain pens to draw. About three years ago, when this channel was just a bunch of super rough tutorials for my students, I decided to make a video where I compared four fountain pens made by the Japanese company Pilot, all of which featured flexible nibs. Those pens were the Pilot Custom 74 with a soft fine nib, the Pilot Falcon with a soft fine nib, the Pilot Custom Heritage 912 with a falcon nib, and the Pilot Custom 743, also with a falcon nib. It was the first video that received any kind of attention from the general public, inspiring me to build my channel. However, that video also got a justified amount of flack for the egregious image quality and the horrendous camera angles, with some commenters asking why it had been filled with a potato. Three years later, I've decided to revisit this topic, not only because my equipment and video making skills have improved slightly, not only because I have more experience using these pens, giving me additional insight into their performance, but also because I have recently purchased the Pilot Justice 95, completing my Pilot Flex collection. Let's get started. Fountain pens with flexible nibs are very popular with artists. This is because such pens allow you to change line thickness with pressure, making your drawing much more expressive. But it turns out that making flex pens is not easy, since they suffer from a number of irritating faults that do not occur with other kinds of pens. The thing is, the ink flow in a flex pen needs to be carefully calibrated. If the flow is too generous, the pen will write too wet, or worse, drip ink everywhere. And if the ink flow is too dry, then the pen will stop working when you put down thick lines, forcing you to stop and wait for the feed to catch up. Also irritating. Furthermore, the alignment between the feed and the nib has to be just right for everything to work well. You would think that these things would have been ironed out in our day and age, but it's mostly not the case, and vintage pens tend to perform much better than their modern equivalents. However, as much as I like my old pens and use them frequently, they come with their own host of problems, fragility and difficulty of cleaning among them. So what do you do if you want a flex pen that's entirely hassle-free? You buy a pen made by Pilot. These pens have none of the issues that plague many flex pens. They start right up, don't leak, have just the right balance of ink flow, and best of all, are super durable, easy to clean, and maintain. The only drawback is that they're expensive. Since my fountain pen reviews are intended for people that use fountain pens for drawing, I tend not to recommend pens that are super expensive, since studio tools tend to see heavy use in messy environments. And of course, since most artists don't make the big bucks. However, I don't hesitate to recommend these Pilot pens, some of which push well past $200, because what you're paying for is exceptional build quality and performance. These, to my mind, are practical precision drawing instruments that if maintained properly, will reward you with a lifetime of service. Furthermore, the price of these pens fluctuate wildly, sometimes by hundreds of dollars, so be patient and you can sometimes find great deals on them. That said, I'm sure many of you will find the cost, even when heavily discounted, completely untenable, especially since it'll make you hesitate to take these pens out of your studio, which is where fountain pens, due to their portability and ease of use, really shine. For those of you that can't even imagine spending over $50 on a pen, I have plenty of recommendations for inexpensive flex pens on my channel. But for those of you ready to plonk down some serious cash for a premium tool, keep watching, but be warned, you might find yourself wanting to purchase all of them. Now let's get to the actual comparisons by first talking about what these pens have in common. The difference in length and girth between these pens is slight, with the shortest being the Pilot Falcon and the longest being the Justice. The difference between the longest and shortest is just over a centimeter. Here they are uncapped, and as you can see, they're very similar in size. The difference is a touch greater when the pens are posted, but really not significantly so. These pens are equally comfortable in terms of balance, posted or unposted, with the exception of the Justice, which, with its extra length, starts to feel slightly back heavy. In terms of weight, these pens, again, are very similar, all of them made primarily of plastic with a few metal parts, making them light, but not insubstantial. Furthermore, the balance on these, when used unposted, is almost exactly the same, slightly forward heavy, balanced a little behind the grip section, which to my mind, is ideal. In terms of ergonomics, again, all of these pens are similar, with short but comfortable grip sections and smooth threading that doesn't catch against the fingers. The only outlier is the Justice that has a slightly longer grip section due to the adjustable ring, which we'll discuss when we talk about the pen. All of these pens are cartridge converters, and with the exception of the Pilot Falcon, use the large Con70 converter, which has a push-button mechanism and very decent ink capacity. 
the Pilot Falcon, to its disadvantage, uses the smaller CON40, or even worse, the CON20 converter, which is not great due to their tiny incapacity. That issue can be avoided, however, if you simply use it with Pilot's proprietary cartridges, which hold a lot of ink, which can then be refilled. Lastly, all these pens do not use a housing unit. The nibs and feeds pull right out, making these pens a cinch to fully clean. And, since these pens, other than the converters, don't have any moving parts, there's nothing that is subject to wear and tear, so again, with proper maintenance, you can expect perfect performance for decades. Since all these pens are similar in terms of size, weight, ergonomics, and filling systems, ease of cleaning, and maintenance, none of those things should be determining factors in your purchasing decision. So, let's move on to what really matters, which is performance, starting with the Pilot Custom 74 Soft Fine. This is the cheapest of the Pilot Flex options, usually retailing in the US at about $125, but often found for way less on the gray market. This is one of Pilot's most popular pens and can be purchased in a variety of colorful finishes if you're into that stuff. As mentioned, this pen takes the excellent CON70 converter and can be used with Pilot cartridges. It features a comfortable grip section, though the threads here are a touch sharper than on the other pens. The pen can be used posted or unposted, but posting makes it long and slightly less maneuverable in the hand. Let's take it through my standard four-part test and see how this pen performs. Before I begin, I should state that all these tests are done on Strathmore Bristol paper, and the pens are all filled with Noodler's Lexington Gray, a transparent ink that allows me to gauge the flow of the pen. In the test for consistency, the Pilot Custom 74 puts down a very, very fine line at any speed and at any angle. I should say that Pilot pens are consistently consistent in this test, and I have never encountered skipping problems with any of them. They seem to always perform perfectly right out of the box, something I'm sad to report is not always the case for my other expensive pens. In the flex department, this pen puts down an extra extra fine line on flexed and flexes up to a medium, or even medium broad. I should note that Pilot is careful not to advertise this nib as flexible or even semi-flexible, but uses the term soft to denote that the pen has a touch of flex to it. This means you should not expect a lot of flex, nor try to push the pen further than it should go. This pen is designed to give a touch of line variation and nothing more, so don't push it. That said, since the pen starts with a very fine unflexed line, the variation is quite noticeable and expressive. In the reverse writing department, the pen puts down a very fine line, which I do use on occasion. However, the nib is already so fine, the reverse writing is barely needed. So, on my flex rating scale, which goes from 1 to 10, 1 being super stiff, like a platinum preppy, and a 10 being super flexible, like some of those rare wet noodles you see mostly on vintage pens, this pen is about a 3, or perhaps a 3.5. In the feedback test, this pen is very smooth for something that puts down such a thin line. Pilot Gold Nibs are some of the smoothest on the market, even when they're super fine like this one, and on smooth paper, they glide effortlessly across the page. As for wetness, this one is quite dry, even when flexed, which is great if you're planning on working on paper that isn't designed for aqueous media or are putting down a lot of hatching and don't want the ink to soak through or feather. Let's subject this pen to the ultimate test, however, by drawing with it a little, and as I draw, I'll give you my thoughts on who this pen is best for. I'm working on the same Bristol paper here, using the same Noodler's Lexington Gray ink, which again, helps show the ink flow. Since this pen puts down a very fine line, it'll be great for those who enjoy working small. And because it's not super flexible, you can work with it as you would a normal pen, without worry that it's going to flex on you. That makes it perfect for those that like to use a lot of fine layered hatching in their drawing, as I often do. Also, because it writes quite dry, it's good for those that tend to work on drawing paper that's not designed for aqueous media. The drawback is that it's not as good on rougher paper, where a bit more flow is required. So, while the flexibility of this pen is not impressive, it's definitely noticeable, allowing you to be bold and expressive when you want to be. This pen really strikes a nice balance in that respect. So, to summarize, let's quickly go over the pros and cons of this pen. Here are the pros. Number one, it's the cheapest of Pilot's Flex Pen offerings, and you can buy it for less than $100. Number two, it's the driest writer of all the Pilot offerings, so it's great for regular paper and for techniques where you use many layers of hatching. Number three, the Flex is nice and noticeable, and best of all, easy to control. 
And now here are the cons. As I see it, there are two drawbacks. The first is that it has the least amount of flex of any of these pens, so if you're looking for strong line variation, you're going to be disappointed. The second is that it doesn't work as well on rougher papers because it's a fairly dry writing pen. Here is the final drawing using the Pilot Custom 74 with a soft, fine nib. Now let's talk about the Pilot Falcon with the soft, fine nib. This pen is famous for its unusual nib, which has long tapered shoulders and an unusual curve giving it a unique ability to put down flat values in reverse, like this. To be honest, I never use the pen this way, since it's hard to see where you're putting down a stroke and it doesn't give you a lot of control. This pen is also an outlier in that it's slightly shorter than the other pens and doesn't accommodate the larger CON70 converter. The converter it uses, the CON40, is very small, especially for a pen that is on the wet side, so I would use it instead with pilot cartridges. Since the inside of this pen is entirely plastic, this pen can be eyedroppered, meaning that if you put some silicone grease on the section threads here, you can fill the entire barrel with ink. However, I've never tried doing this and can't speak for it. I should also say that there is a larger, more expensive metal version of this pen that does accommodate the CON70 converter, but once again I've never tried it and can't say if the price difference between the plastic and metal versions are worth it. As mentioned, the ergonomics are very similar to other pens, though because the pen is slightly shorter, it's a little bit more comfortable to use posted. Not feeling quite as unwieldy. Let's take this pen through its paces with my four-part test. In the consistency test, this pen performed perfectly. This is one of the older pens in my collection, one that has seen continuous heavy use, and it performs exactly the same way as when I first acquired it. And the artist friend who first recommended this pen to me has had it for much longer and also reports flawless performance. This is a workhorse pen that probably justified its price several times over since I've purchased it. In the flexibility test, this pen is similar to the Pilot Custom 74, though because the unflex line is a little thicker, the line variation here is not quite as pronounced. However, this pen is one of the best reverse writers in my collection, putting down a smooth, extra, extra fine line. So if you enjoy being able to do this, this is the better option. I would rate the flex on this pen at about a 3.5, or maybe even pushing towards 3.75, perhaps a touch flexier than the Custom 74. In the feedback department, this pen is scratchier than the Pilot Custom 74, which is surprising since it's a wider nib. The Falcon also comes in an extra fine, which is supposedly even scratchier. That said, the feedback here is nothing bad, just don't expect glass smooth performance like in other Pilot Pen offerings. And in the wetness test, this pen is considerably wetter than the Pilot 74, which contributes to making the lines wider. This can be a plus or minus, depending on your drawing style, but also the kind of paper the pen is used with. On rougher papers, such as cold pressed watercolor paper, the Falcon works better than the Custom 74, but on regular paper, it'll have a tendency to strike through and feather if the lines are applied with a lot of flex and in a lot of layers. Let's take this pen out for a drive and see how it actually draws in practice. This pen is, out of the five, probably the most widely used by artists, and as I mentioned, I bought it because it was recommended to me by an artist friend of mine. And though it's an excellent performer, I have to admit that it's the least favorite of the five in my collection. I think this has to do with the way I work more than the pen itself, because it falls into the uncomfortable middle between the various drawing techniques I use. For very fine line work and a touch of flex, I tend to prefer the Pilot Custom 74, which has a finer, drier line that allows me to layer my hatching more gradually. And if I need more flex, I prefer other pens, such as the Custom 912 FA or the 743 FA. That said, for some people out there, the Custom 74 might be too dry, so if you're looking for something with a wetter flow and a similar amount of flex, then go with a Falcon. So, to summarize, here are the pros and cons of the Pilot Falcon. The pros are, number one, good control over Noma writing, and easy to control the flex. Number two, it puts down a wet line, making it more suitable for working on rougher paper. Number three, it's an excellent reverse writer, capable of putting down smooth, extra, extra fine lines. And here are the cons. Number one, the price. 
This is a pen that normally retails in the US for over $180, though it can be purchased on the gray market directly from Japan for far less than that. Considering that the Pilot Custom 74, a much cheaper pen, performs similarly, the extra cost is difficult to justify. Number two, the fact that it uses the very crappy CON40 converter. Again, I would just use Pilot cartridges which have very decent ink capacity. Number three, the wetness of the pen means that it doesn't work well on many regular drawing papers since it'll have a tendency to feather or strike through. Here is the completed test done with the Pilot Falcon Soft Fine. Okay, now let's move on to the Pilot 912 FA. The pen body here is very similar in design to the Falcon, with ruthenium plating and flat finials, but longer and wider with a more premium feel to it. Being longer than the Falcon, it accommodates the excellent CON70 converter, which is great, but the extra length makes it a little bit less maneuverable when posted. The interesting thing is that it retails at about the same price as the Falcon, especially on the gray market, making it a much better deal. Let's take this pen through its paces with my four-part test. In the consistency test, this pen is true to the pilot name and is faultless. The tines on this pen are more delicate, however, and you have to be more careful in the side strokes, especially on rougher paper, since the tines can split and splatter ink. This is in extreme speeds and on rougher papers, and not something that should cause concern in regular drawing. Also, notice that this pen puts down a much wider line than the other pens, closer to a medium. This partially has to do with how wet this pen writes, which we'll get to shortly. In the line variation test is where this pen really shows itself as one of the best out-of-the-box modern flex pens, going from a fine line to a double broad. You do have to slow down your stroke slightly to prevent the pen from railroading, but really, in most cases, the pen performs perfectly. That said, to really get the best performance out of this pen, you should purchase an ebonite feed from a company called Flexible Nib Factory. These feeds, which cost around $30, have a much more generous ink flow and will keep the pen from railroading, even when you're putting down flex lines quickly. This pen is fairly good at reverse writing, which is great, because I often find myself wishing for a finer line. In the flex rating, I would give this pen a 6.5, or perhaps even a 7, entering the full flex territory. In the feedback department, the pen is quite smooth, consistent with Pilot's other gold offerings. Again, be careful going fast on the side strokes, especially on rougher papers, or you'll splatter ink. And in the wetness test, as is the case with many full flex pens, the pen is on the wet side, though nothing crazy. It does mean you have to use good paper and be careful not to smear your lines as you draw, since they take their time to dry. Let's do some drawing with this pen and give you my thoughts on who this pen is best for. While you can use this pen for relatively fine hatching if you have a light touch, it's really designed for a style that uses strong lines with a lot of line variation. Since this pen is wet, the lines take their time to dry, making it less than ideal for situations where you want to go over them with wash. Like many pens with this degree of flex, the tines are delicate, making it slightly more difficult to use on flexed. I would say that this pen would be better for an intermediate to advanced artist who has some experience using flexible pens. But if you already have a trained hand and are looking for a vintage style degree of flex paired with the durability and reliability of a modern pen, this is the best choice. Here are the pros and cons of this pen. The pros. Number one, superior flex. This is one of the best out of the box modern flex pens you can get. Again, to supercharge the performance, you should get an ebonite feed for it, but once you do, this is a pen with flex that won't quit. Number two, price. You can sometimes find this pen at around $150 and even lower. Yes, that's still expensive, but considering that other pens in this category, such as the Mont Blanc 149 Calligraphy and the Scribo Feel and the Magna Carta 600 are hundreds of dollars more, this pen is actually a great value. And now for the cons. Number one, the Unflex line is not as fine as I would like. If this pen was a little finer, it would be just perfect. That said, you can get this pen reground by a Nibmeister, and it would not cost you all that much to do it. Number two, this pen writes wet. For those of you that use flex pens and are used to the wetness, this will not be an issue. 
However, for those of you just diving into the world of Flex, this will take some getting used to. Mostly, it's just an issue of using the correct paper and being careful not to smear the lines as you're drawing. But in situations when you're in a rush, having to wait for wet lines to dry can be a source of irritation. Number three, softness. This pen is more difficult to control than other Pilot Flex options. All that means is that you have to work light if you want consistent on flex lines. It's nothing close to as difficult as some of the very flexible calligraphy dip pen nibs out there, but it's something that needs getting used to. Here's the completed drawing test using the Pilot 912 FA. Now let's discuss the Pilot Custom 743 FA. The nib on this pen is of the same design as the one on the 912, but is larger being the number 15 size. Being a longer pen, it does take the CON70 converter, but in this case, I'm simply using a refilled cartridge. One advantage of this pen is that it uses the same feed as the excellent Pilot Custom 823, which is a vacuum filler that holds a lot of ink. This allows you to place the FA nib into the A23, creating the holiest of holy grail pens, the Pilot Custom A23 FA, a pen that has everything you want in a flex pen, excellent flex and huge ink capacity. Let's take the 743 through my tests and see how it compares. In the consistency test, we find that this pen puts down a much finer unflex line than the 912 FA but as per usual, one that is equally consistent in every direction. The tines on the 743 FA are stiffer, so you can put down rapid unflex strokes without worrying that the tines will flex on you. In the flexibility test, the 743 puts down an unflex line that is quite fine, though not quite as fine as the Custom 74, and then flexes to a broad. While not as flexible as the 912 FA, the line variation here is quite nice, better than either the Falcon or the Custom 74. And it's a very decent reverse rider, so you can get an extra extra fine line out of it should you need it. I would rate this pen at about a 5, a very solid semi-flex pen. In the feedback test, this one is quite smooth, about as smooth as you can get from a nib this fine. And in the wetness test, it puts down a semi-wet line not nearly as wet as the Pilot 912 FA, or even the Pilot Falcon, making it much more suitable for a large variety of papers. Now, let's draw with this pen and see how it fares in actual practice. I might as well admit now that this is my favorite pen in the lineup, because for me, it strikes the perfect balance in terms of line width, ink flow, and flex. The Unflex line is a touch wider and wetter than the Custom 74, but not as wide or as wet as the Falcon. The flex is not as great as the 912, but the stiffer nib allows for better control for fast unflexed lines, something I use frequently in my work. It's also relatively dry for a flex pen, which allows me to use it with a greater variety of papers, and not to have to wait a long time for lines to dry. This is the perfect pen for a variety of applications, everything from quick sketches to long finished work. Do I wish that the pen had more flex? Yes, but if you look at old master pen and ink drawings, you'll find that with a few exceptions, they don't make use of huge line variation, even though the quills they were drawn with were more than capable of it. And since my work doesn't either, the 743 FA meets most of my flex pen needs. So let's go through the pros and cons of this pen. Here are the pros. Number one, the biggest one is the wonderfully responsive semi-flex nib, good for many kinds of drawing styles, from light, multi-layered, single directional hatching to bold calligraphic cross contour hatching. Number two, a perfectly balanced ink flow, not too wet, not too dry, and unlike the 912 FA, which really needs that ebonite upgrade, it works perfectly right out of the box. Now for the cons. Number one, the only one is the price, which in the US can be as much as $300 or more. However, you can buy it at a significant discount on the gray market directly from Japan. While I would never pay $300 for this pen, remember that what you're paying for is exceptional build quality and superior performance, and this is one of the best flex pens you can get for any price. Here's the completed drawing test using the Pilot Custom 743 FA.
Let's talk about the most recent member of my Pilot Flex collection, the Pilot Justice 95. I held off purchasing this pen for quite some time because I felt that the adjustability of this pen was a gimmick and because of the price, but changed my mind after seeing some favorable reviews and a considerable discount on the gray market. As mentioned, this is the largest pen in the lineup, but not considerably so, and the extra length comes from the grip section that has to accommodate the adjustment ring. This ring has a slight texture on it that rubs against your fingers slightly, but is nothing that you can't get used to. It controls a small plate here, which when turned to the left, moves the plate up, making the pen stiffer, and then when you turn the ring to the right, it makes the pen softer. By the way, the mechanism does not affect the ease of cleaning in any way, and the nib and feet pull right out exactly the same way as they do in the other pens, making this pen very easy to clean. Let's take this pen through my tests and see how it performs. Starting with the hard setting, the pen puts down a very fine line, as fine as the Custom 74. Given how much I love using that pen, this is a very nice starting point. And of course, just like every one of these pens, it's consistent in every direction and at any speed. In the flexibility test, this pen starts with an extra extra fine line and flexes slightly better than either the Custom 74 or the Falcon. Given how fine the line starts, that's an impressive amount of flex. In reverse writing, it barely puts down a line at all, but is still usable. So though the flex is limited, the range is very good, creating expressive, calligraphically precise lines. I rate this pen about a 4, or even a 4.5 on my scale, just short of semi-flex. In the feedback test, it's quite smooth, about the same as the Custom 74. Again, great considering the fineness of the nib. And in the wetness test, it shows itself to be very dry, as dry as the Pilot Custom 74, making this pen suitable for very fine multi-layered hatching and working on a variety of papers. Now let's test it in the soft setting. You can see the difference immediately, with the pen putting down not only a wider line, but one that is also a little darker. The pen is once again perfectly consistent, as is to be expected. In the flexibility test, the pen actually performed only a little better than in the hard setting, but the pressure required to flex was not as great. In fact, since the pen started at a wider line unflexed, and fully flexed finished at about the same line width, you could say that the line variation was actually worse than in the hard setting. So in the flex rating, I would put this at about a 4.5 or maybe even a 4.75, a little tiny bit softer than in the hard setting. In the feedback test, it performs similarly to the Pilot Custom 74, which is to say smooth for a pen this fine. And in the wetness test is where the main difference between the hard and soft settings can be seen. The pen wrote much wetter, as wet as a Pilot Falcon. That is the real purpose of the hard and soft setting, not to control flex, as Pilot advertises, but to control flow. This, as far as I know, is the only pen with this useful feature. Let's draw with this pen and see how it works in practice. I'm starting in the soft setting, though the hard setting would also be a good starting point for sketching things in with a very light line. In the soft setting, the pen is absolutely wonderful, putting down a line that's perhaps wetter than the Custom 74, but not as wet as the Falcon. I would say somewhere close to the 743 in terms of flow. That makes the Justice my second favorite pen, falling just short of the 743 because it's not quite as flexible. But this pen's ability to adjust the flow makes it even more versatile than the 743. In the hard setting, I can put down very fine lines, which is great for value transitions and halftones. While similar things can be done using reverse writing in many of these pens, the hard setting also allows for flex, something you can't do in reverse writing. This pen is really two pens in one, a combination of the Pilot Custom 74 and the Pilot 743 FA, without the range of flex. A wonderfully useful and versatile drawing tool. So let's talk about the pros and cons of this pen. The pros as I see them are, number one, a wonderfully responsive semi-flex nib, my favorite after the 743 FA. And number two, the mechanism, which gives you control over flow, so you can put down dry, extra, extra fine lines in the hard setting, and wetter, thicker lines in the soft setting, and everything in between. Because it can do so many different things, it's the perfect pen to take with you, if you can only take one pen. Now, let's discuss the cons. 
Number one, the price. This, along with the 743 FA, is the most expensive of Pilot's Flex offerings. I've lost expensive pens before, and it's a painful experience, so despite it being the perfect pen to take with you, if you can only take one pen, this is a pen that's not leaving my studio. That said, the price fluctuates wildly, so if you're patient, you might be able to buy it at a significant discount on the gray market directly from Japan. And since we're on the topic of the gray market, I do try to support local retailers and buy from them often, but the huge markup for Pilot pens in the US, to my mind, can't be justified. Furthermore, the prices on Pilot just jumped drastically, unlike my teacher's salary, which has stayed the same for years. Here is the finished drawing test using the Pilot Justice 95. I hope this video helped you in your purchasing decisions. If you'd like to learn more about these pens, I have individual reviews, the links to which I'll leave in the description section. Also, if you haven't done so, please subscribe and stay tuned to more fountain pen and other art material reviews, as well as drawing instruction focusing on pen and ink. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you back in my messy studio very soon. Bye for now.